Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Jeremiah 17, verse 14. Yes. Okay. Heal me, Lord, yes. and I will be healed. Yes. Save me, and I will be saved. For you are the one I praise. You are the one I praise. Who did we come here to praise? Him. The mighty Jesus. The eternal God. The glorious God, the gracious God, the merciful God, the wonder-working God. That is the one we praise. So today, He will heal you. Today, He will heal somebody. Today, I see the hand of God in the life of somebody. And if you are that person, let me hear you say, I am here, Lord. Heal me. And I will be healed. Save me, Lord. And I will be saved. Amen. And if you believe that, shout Amen. Amen. <laughs> oh, Baba. <laughs> Hosea, Hosea, Hosea. Hosea 14, verse 4. Hosea 14, verse 4. There are different kinds of healing. <laughs> Oh, Hosea 14, verse 4. We give God the glory. <laughs> Are you there? Yes. He says, He says, I will heal their waywardness. <laughs> Did you see that? Another kind of healing. God says, I will heal their waywardness. If you have a son or a daughter that is wayward, that is not accepting Christ, today, why not bring forth his name? And God will heal his waywardness. Yes. Hallelujah. <laughs> he said, We heal their waywardness and love them freely. For my anger has turned away from them. Today, today, this very today, I prophesy for every of the child that is not accepting Christ, or the loved one that is not accepting Christ. I command his soul to be healed. I call healing to affect his family. That he will turn around. That is the healing that will cause him to turn around. I remember there used to be a man. This man do not accept Christ. He's wayward. He always go out and get himself drunk. So the wife came to meet me and we prayed. And we healed his waywardness. When he go out, they will fight him outside and he will run back home. When he wants to drink, he will, he will see trouble in the place of the bar and we run back home. When he want to see his girlfriend, the girlfriend will tell him, I don't want to talk to you no more. He will come back home. And when he came back home after a while, he said, well, I'm tired of all these things. Let me just give my life to Christ. Today, the same thing is going to happen. If you have a brother that is still on drugs, God is going to heal him. If you have a sister that is still moving up and down, God is going to heal him. That is why you are here. As you are hearing the word, the healing is happening. As you are hearing the word, the deliverance is taking place. You don't need to lay hands on somebody before the deliverance will come. He says he said his word, and the word healed them. And the word delivered them from their destruction. Malachi, Ch Malachi chapter 4, verse 2. Malachi 4, 2. Hey. These are strong scriptures. Thank you, Jesus. Malachi 4, verse 2. Oh. And, and you, you see it. But for you, who reference my name? The son of righteousness will rise with healing in his race. And you will go out and frolic like well-fed cats. I see the son of righteousness rising with healing in his wings. He said, those that fear his name, they will rise with healing in their wings. You will wake up every morning, you will discover one of these days. Let me tell you, you wake up one morning, you will discover that you are healed. Can I hear somebody shout a big amen? 
you will just wake up, you will just discover you are doing things you are supposed to do. You used to use glasses. You just wake up, you discover that you are not using glasses you are reading. You will wake up one morning, you will just discover the pain in your body has gone. You will wake up one morning, you will discover that you are totally cured of all infirmities. The Son of Righteousness is about to visit your house. The Son of Righteousness will visit your family. As you are going back home, you will see Jesus in your life. And if that would be, let me hear you shout a big yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. In Matthew chapter 8, verse 8. Matthew 8. 8, verse 8. Oh, Brother Tony, are you there, sir? God bless you, sir. Matthew 8, verse 8. Now, this Mama Rosa, Rosemary, she's not here. Okay, this scripture is for her. Matthew 8, verse 8. The sentinel replied, Lord, I do not deserve to have you come under my roof. Could somebody complete it for me? That just, what did he say there? Speak the word. Speak the word. And my servant shall be healed. Yeah. So tonight, what are we going to do? We are going to speak the word. <laughs> Can I hear somebody shout and be amen? Yeah. If he say cry the word, if he say shout the word, he says speak the word. Speak the word. Is there somebody here that is willing to speak the word? Is, are you ready to speak the word? Brother Billy, are you ready to speak the word? He said, we speak the word, and the servant will be here. Therefore, can we lift up our right hand? Everyone that is associated to us, that have pains, infirmities, all kind of pains or sickness in their body, we speak the word now, and we command healing to rise. We command deliverance to rise. We call the hand of God to move. We call for healing to be established in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We command doors to be open. We call the angels of God to visit every family in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you for this great healing. In Jesus' name we pray. Can somebody say amen? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I tell you what, what he started off with. Order for you to get all the way to the very end. Let's understand. First thing he did was went to the Lord and said, Lord, forgive me for I have sinned. Ah, yes. what did he do? He was saying that he was crying to the Lord. Everybody's against me. Oh my God, you know it. So you got good words to say about them? You should. Glorify them, God. Glorify you. The very last part of what we got to was being humble. So we're not humble within ourselves. And forgive everyone. Even when they're coming and throwing dirt in our face, to turn and walk away and know that God is going to deliver us. He had all the verses right there. Deliver us. But we got to get past the first part. We must be humble to get to the humble part. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
It's God's glory on us that does win them over. It's God's glory that brings them to us. We don't go out. We don't. All we are is the feet, the hands, the eyes. We, we just go out to deliver the message. It's all about Him. The shine that we beat up on us, Father God, we just thank you for the zeal of Jesus Christ in our eyes as we go out. The Holy Ghost glow upon our face. Thank you, Jesus, for that. When people just walk up to you, see, God sends them. Just like right here. Yeah. None of the right cell. This lady right here, when I met her, her husband was gone or something, but I gave her, I gave her a necklace, I, I gave her this, and a fish. And she texted me back, and she led the way across right away to her aunt, correct? Awesome. And then she texted me and said, I, I didn't want to, but I gave that fish away to a friend of mine. Yeah. But what really touched my heart was that she went to the Lord and asked the Lord for forgiveness because she was reluctant to give it away. And I said, that's a woman of God right there. Right. And I see what's on the other side over there is a man of God also. I am with you. So I just I feel blessed today to have them with us. Each and every one of us are here today. Amen. Thank you for allowing us to join. Well, hey, it was him. It was like she said, I was supposed to call you two days ago. I was supposed to call her like four days ago. But I said, can we get this toilet in? You know, we got people coming. You know, so it was just a fight all the way. I put the last board down this morning. Well, it was funny because she came to me this afternoon, right? It was, it was this afternoon, she goes. She just said uh, something about coming to this, this, this place, and I said, well, who is it, what is it, where is it? I had no idea until she talked to me this afternoon about you. I had no idea that you were even here. And, um, and we just, you know, we... We just try to live a life that glorifies God, right? Preach Jesus every day when necessary to use words, right? It's, it's by your walk, it's by my walk, it's by our walk as Christians. It's not what we say that counts. It's not what we say that the world sees, right? The world doesn't see what we say. The world doesn't believe what we, what we speak. The world believes what we do, how we act, how we treat each other. That's that's where that's where where God wants us, right? Jesus. When I, when I think about Jesus, and, and and you know, you can go into the Ten Commandments and they're wonderful, and, and I preached every one of them, right? But one that I preached more than any other is the only commandment that Jesus ever gave: love, right? Love, love God, love your enemy. Love your neighbor as yourself. And to his followers and to his people, he said, love each other. By this, by this, by love, shall all men know you are my disciples. By this. And love is not something you say. Love is something you do. Praise the name 
It's all about him. It's all about him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, that's, that's when your blessings come, you know. And I said, you know what? We're the good five virgins, okay? Up here, you know, we got our lamps are full. They're going to stay that way. And, you know, and, and to get to where you, you got to go, it takes a sacrifice. It takes a sacrifice. Do it. Amen. 